Hello, my fellow Hoovians. Welcome back to Cafe Crashdown. I am Kayla here at the Crash Hub, and we have been on a cosmic journey. We have officially completed season 14 of Doctor Who, a new season, a new refresh, a new vibe. We have a lot to talk about um, after sitting down and just kind of like collecting our thoughts and thinking through how this whole season overall has panned out. I have some hits, definitely have some misses, and I can't wait to discuss it with you. So let's roll that intro. Hey there, my dudes, welcome back. Small disclaimer, I do have a cold, so I'm gonna sound a little bit nasally, but I really wanted to get this video out because you know, that's what we're talking about right now. This new season finally ended, and I feel like there's just a lot to talk about as to kind of where we're all sitting with, with a lot of these new changes. And so here I am, so just bear with me if you don't mind. And if you've never been here before, this is Cafe Crash Now. We talk about all things horn sci-fi. So it's not just Doctor Who, although I've been putting out a lot of Doctor Who content lately, but we also talk about horror, uh, classic horror film, sub-genres of the horror genre. Uh, same with sci-fi, Dune. Uh, we're gonna be talking about Dune Prophecy and Alien Romulus in the future, you name it. So if those kind of things interest you, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, so that way we can have some of these really great discussions together about these two amazing and incredible genres. All right, let's now get into it. So before diving in to do this long review, I wanted to make sure I rewatched the whole new season just with fresher eyes. Uh, you know, we live in a society now and a culture where we binge watch. So I wanted to see what that experience was like to binge watch this latest season of Doctor Who and to see if any of my opinions changed and thoughts and feelings that I had. And no, um, if anything, it actually added a little bit more uh, to my thoughts about this season. I'm just gonna come out and say that this wasn't my favorite season of Doctor Who. And there were some really fun things about the season, which we're definitely gonna get into, but I think there were a lot of really big misses that for me and being a old school Whovian, um, I felt like we did huge misses or what I like to call crash landings, which you'll see later on. And so I'm excited to talk to you guys about this because this is an open discussion. You know, we're all fellow nerds um, and new viewers, right? So we have some oldies who have been watching Doctor Who, including Classic Who. So been in this universe for years, uh, decades. And then we have a lot of new people watching the show. And so I want this to be a really open discussion and something that we can all really enjoy together in the comments. So. Please just keep that in mind that um, there are new people watching this. These are all opinions. This is just what I like and dislike out of Doctor Who. It's probably gonna be different from your experience in watching Doctor Who. So let's just be open with the discussion and talk about it. So I'm gonna start off with what I really liked about this new season of Doctor Who. For one, I absolutely loved Ruby as a companion. I think she was great. I thought she was very compassionate. She was very fun a very free spirit, which I think is something the doctor does need. She was at the right place at the right time with a lot of things. And I just really enjoyed her. I enjoyed her demeanor when she had her one-off basically in 73 yards. I enjoyed that episode. I think that's a good testament when you get those solo episodes with that companion, how you are gonna feel about them. And you know, in 73 yards, Ruby did really great. And we really saw how clever she was in regards to figuring out how to stop that prime minister from taking power. She was utilizing her problem that she had with this weird woman in the distance, it follows creature, uh, and using it to her advantage to save the planet. So very cool on Ruby's end for that. So I thought her and her 
connection with the doctor, how they interacted in the season was very great. So kudos to casting on that. Ruby is awesome. I do look forward to seeing her more in the next season. Another thing that I really liked was the vulnerability of the doctor. This is something that's new and really different for him. He definitely has moments of being vulnerable, of course, but it takes him a little bit to get to that point, uh, which of course is a safeguard. Uh, he's been through a lot of trauma in his life uh, for the doctor that we know and have experienced and the we've been on those journeys with him. And so, of course, it's gonna be a lot harder for someone like that to be super vulnerable, which does cause conflicts with his companions a lot of the times in the past and them thinking that he's cruel and has no feeling or emotion. I think it's the exact opposite. I think he's just been trying to protect himself. And so this new doctor is, they've explained this and after that split with David Tennant's doctor, he is a newer doctor and he's gone through a lot of healing and it is healthy to deal with your emotions. And I appreciate that, that Russell said that he was really trying to show people that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's actually a superpower to be vulnerable, to show emotion, to be expressive with your feelings. It is not something to just hide and stuff away or it doesn't make you look weak. It's just something our society has taught over decades, if not centuries, and that needs to stop. And so I think it's really great that he started to explore this more with the doctor, was showing a lot more emotion. I know a lot of people were saying that he was basically a crybaby in the season, which I didn't get at all. I did not get that he was being a crybaby. I thought he was feeling very human, really. So, um, I appreciated the vulnerability of the doctor in this season. The filming was great, okay? The special effects were fantastic. I mean, that production and that set, wowza. I mean, they put money in this, okay? And it looks great, like it looks so good. The effects were awesome. The sound production was really fantastic. I'm here for it. all the cool new effects in the TARDIS with the lighting and everything, like it was great. So awesome on the production end. And going into this new doctor, I do like this new doctor. I think this actor has done a really great job in bringing this new version of the doctor. He has shown that vulnerability. There were some very good moments in the season. A little hard to find here and there, but there were moments where we really just felt him, we felt his pain, and we were there with him. And in those moments, I really saw that acting shine, and I really loved that. So. I'm excited to see more from this actor and with this doctor in the next season. And I will say that I thought Sutek's reveal was pretty cool. Um, and some people have been complaining about this, like how did nobody know that he was cloaked in the TARDIS this whole time? I mean, sure, I, I can see some arguments there and like things that they've run into in the past, but in the same sense, it's a god compared to these aliens across space. So I don't know, I feel like a god has like OP power and can do whatever he wants and can really mask himself from anybody. So I didn't really see that as that big of a deal. And also, you know, they're kind of like, well, why hasn't he like revealed himself sooner either? Well, he has a plan. The whole point of him doing this is to literally hop on the TARDIS and to ride with the doctor and to go to all of these places, all of these different timelines, and basically plant a seed for his death angels. So in that way, once he activates them, then he literally can destroy everything. Every timeline, every planet, every universe and multiverse. It's really brilliant when you think about it. Like, it was really smart on Sutek's end. So I do get the strategy behind Sutek and what he was doing. And so I have no beef about that. I think it was very clever. And it was fun to have him as a villain because we haven't seen him in so long. And it's just a new territory dealing with gods and like this whole pantheon thing. So I really hope we explore that more in season two, which I would imagine that we are. I mean, why bring this up and make it a whole focus this first season if it's not gonna be played out? But. We'll get into that. Okay, now we're getting into what I call the crash landing. We are crashing in into the planet, uh, rough landing, rough waters. These were the misses for me for this season. It took me a little bit to figure out what was it that was missing for me. 
I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I did a video after the episode Rogue, and even then, I still couldn't really pinpoint what it was that was not working for me, although I kind of got there, but I wasn't fully there yet because, you know, we were still in the season. We were still exploring things, right? After doing a rewatch, what I then did was I decided to watch the first episode uh, after a regeneration of the Doctors because I wanted to see how they revealed their new versions of themselves. And I came to a couple of very interesting conclusions, which will be kind of woven in this aspect of the video. So first things first, what I found that was really lacking in the season was the science. I mean, okay, listen, they, they had some things. They had a space station. We talked about alternate timelines, but we had the episode Dot and Bubble which was very sci-fi and I really appreciate it. I was very excited when I saw that episode. It's like, oh my God, here we are. We're, we're finally into some sci-fi. Like this is a sci-fi show at its core. And I missed it. I missed the science, okay? One of the things I always really appreciated about the show was I learned a lot actually about a lot of these different scientific theories that, okay, they're dumbed down for us and Doctor Who but they paint scenarios and stuff to really help explain some of these very complicated scientific aspects and theories in the world and in our universe. And so I always really thought that that was really cool and I appreciated that. And I also didn't see that longing of the doctor when it came to science either, which I had a huge issue with. The other thing was the lack of world building. Doctor Who is known to be a show to explore all these crazy freaking planets, these weird alien creations, just taking you out of this world, right? And I didn't feel that in the season at all. I'm trying to sit here and think the most dramatic place that we went to. And, you know, we had Space Babies, which is on a space station. We went back in time to the Beatles and dealt with the Maestro. We had 73 Yards, which was an alternate timeline. Dot and Bubble was very sci-fi, right? Like we did get a different planet and we had these AI. That AI situation was really cool. So that was like the most sci-fi I felt like we really got. So then, you know, we get into Rogue and that's just going back in time and just immersing ourselves in the world, not even like really doing anything science-y, you know? And so, yeah, I just feel like we also didn't, oh yeah, we went to that one planet, which that kind of tells you how memorable that episode was to me, boom. It was like a war-torn a war -torn world, basically looked like World War I trenches. Um, and of course, at the end, you get like the beautiful shots of the planets and stuff like that. But there just wasn't any like wow factors regarding the world bending. And that's such a disappointment to me because Russell T. Davies, Russell, my man, you are so good at doing that. Your past seasons of Doctor Who, you did great taking us to the Ood planet and, you know, all of these different cool places. And I just didn't feel that in this season. And I really missed it. I missed it a lot. And I see this problem a lot. Like Star Wars has this problem too for me where I felt like George Lucas I mean, he was a master world builder, okay? His planets and the universe of Star Wars that he created was brilliant and so cool and so unique. And it was like, once he gave over the rights and gave that away, you know, we get this like newer trilogy with Rey. And that was one of the issues I had in the earlier films with Rey's storyline was the world building wasn't really there. It wasn't very impressive. Whereas I felt like I was taken to taken to a new universe or taken to a new planet when we're with George Lucas. And I feel like that's the same problem that we're running into in this season with Doctor Who. So what I found out besides these, what it was for me that was the biggest miss is for me, again, I think all of us, we watch this show for different reasons. And you know, whether it's the science or the just the fun adventures, whatever that may be. For me, I watch the show because of the Doctor. I think the character of the Doctor is so fun and so dynamic. There's so much to the character of the Doctor. There, there's the wittiness and the quirkiness, the cleverness, the 
um, intensity that he has and that he can have, the childlike aspect of him that comes through, that wants to play. There's just so much to him. And I didn't see that doctor in this season. When I, the reason why I watched all of the different regenerations of each doctor is because I wanted to see if I felt like it was the same doctor who regenerated each time. And I did. Each actor did so good at still making their own version of the doctor, but still pulling in the weird quirks and mannerisms of the doctor that we know. So when I talk about the science aspect, right? Going in there and as soon as you land on a planet, he is obsessed with the planet. He wants to explore it. And then suddenly he knows, he just like instantly knows something is off, okay? And he is obsessed with figuring out what that is. And again, he is thinking 100 miles a minute. So he's super fast, super quick. He's hard to follow sometimes. The man has ADHD. And all of that, all of that energy, all of that enthusiasm, all that intensity, all of that, I didn't get that from this new doctor. He was too cool. Let's be real. This new doctor, he is way too cool. All right, I need the dorky, very quirky, doctor. And I don't know if that's because this is a new doctor. It's a new refresh. He's a healed version of the doctor, but I think that's a really big miss if they're purposefully making that decision to make him completely different because we as fans are so rooted in who we know as the doctor and we have fallen in love with this doctor for a reason, for many reasons, right? And so to take that all away and to make this into a whole new thing, the guy might as well just be any random guy that you throw in this new ride, right? The TARDIS is like, hey, check out my new car. Like, hop in, let's go. We're just gonna go and explore places. And literally that's all they really did. You know what I mean? Like they just like went to a planet and like hung out and immersed themselves into the planet, cosplaying or, you know, like whatever. It could have been anybody doing that with how this was delivered. So I think that was when I was talking about in Rogue, what was a miss for me is it just still didn't seem like the doctor. For me, there was no issue with him wanting to have a relationship with a man because hey, that Rogue guy, he was extremely good looking and their chemistry was really great and really fun. I enjoyed that dynamic, but the doctor was so forward and he was like so cool with like how he was going in with like his liners and so smooth. And that is not the doctor for me, okay? He's really awkward. He doesn't really know how to take flirting sometimes from people. He knows how to flirt for sure. We have seen him flirt, but he is a dorky guy and nerdy guy and he flirts in a very weird and quirky way. And so he was just different. And so I think that we need to combine the two a bit more. And I think that that will help in solving that problem. But yeah, lack of world building, lack of science, the lack of the quirk, okay? We need the quirk back. Another miss for me was the reveal of Ruby's lineage and her mom. When I first watched it, I thought it was great. I thought it was very interesting and fun that how they explained it, how like everybody puts so much importance on Ruby's mom that it made her mom important. I, I think that's a very interesting concept and I do appreciate that. However, I feel like there's just so many plot holes at the moment. And so what I'm hoping is while that her mom may just be a normal human and stuff, I am hoping that there's more to Ruby's story and that maybe there is someone, maybe it is the trickster who has intervened early on in Ruby's life or something. I don't know. Because remember, there's just all these questions. Why does it always snow when Ruby is reminiscing about this memory, right? I think that's still really weird and doesn't really explain anything unless I just completely missed it. Or why was her soul singing a very specific song when the maestro had her like tied up with all of the music chords. And that song sounded so similar to the song of the, the music of the trickster, right? So that's where that was kind of like setting some people off. Why I think, oh, maybe it is possible that the trickster, the trickster is still tied to this in some way. But that's the thing, it's like we had all these things and we had the song build up. It's kind of the same thing with the Ray situation. Um, with like her parents and how, you know, it's like the second movie in Star Wars and they were basically like your parents were nobody. But then we find out, oh, but you know, your grandfather was, 
he was Emperor Palpatine, so there's that. So I'm kind of hoping for a reveal like that, that maybe there's more to Ruby's story to make this way more interesting because that was, yeah, now really like sitting and rewatching it, it was a letdown to me that that's all that we've looking been looking forward to. So I do have hopes for that, that there's more to her story and it isn't gonna be ending with just this. I just think in general, my expectations were very high given that Russell T Davies was taking over these two first two seasons of this new reboot. And so I just feel like I was let down a bit um, with this. And you know, I'm still here. I'm still gonna watch the second season. I'm gonna be supportive but I hope that we're expanding a little bit more. You know, is it the problem that we are on a new network like Disney? Is that the problem? Which we've seen, it's like, as soon as Disney gets their hands on some stuff, it's not as great. Disney don't come for me, okay? I do appreciate a lot of the Marvel stuff and I'm really hoping that you don't F with my X-Men now, but I, it makes me nervous, right? Cause that's kind of how it was with Star Wars there for a bit, you know, it was a little rough water. So, you know, is this the fact that, I know we have BBC still that's part of this, but with it being on Disney plus, like, is this having an effect on pulling away from the sci-fi as much and just adding more of this like adventure ride into the TARDIS? Is it the lack of episodes, right? We don't, we didn't get that many episodes with the season. We usually have a lot more, which usually takes the companion and the doctor on more journeys and things like that and kind of get that relationship built and then drama hits, right? So I I don't know, but I just feel like my expectations were high and they crashed a bit and that sucks. So let's talk about this. This is a new refresh. So maybe that's what we need to do. We need to rework our brains and to think our doctor who that we know and that we've journeyed with, it isn't the same anymore. It's it died with David Tennant. It retired with David Tennant. When David Tennant's doctor retired with Donna, that retired. So this is a new new thing. Maybe that's it. So, okay. So the doctor has this new personality, new vibe. I don't know, maybe that's it. Maybe we just gotta reshape our brains with it. I don't know. I'm not gonna get into the discussion of the whole woke thing because I do disagree with that. I don't think that that was a problem for me with the show being too woke. I very much live in a community and a society where I'm surrounded by all kinds of things in life. Um, and so I didn't feel like I was being beat to death with wokeness um, watching this season, but I know that there are a lot of you out there that they, you felt that that was the case and I'm not gonna discredit you from feeling that way either. So if you wanna talk more about it in the comments, please feel free and let me know what it was that you felt that you were being, what was being overly saturated for you. Just again, conversations like that, please just keep it, keep it chill. Like this is all meant to be a discussion. And for us fellow Whovians and fellow nerds to just like hang out and just talk, right? But I'm gonna touch on the fact that there were three episodes that really stood out for me this season. 73 Yards, great episode. Little mix of horror, a little mix of sci-fi, a lot of thriller. Love that. That was really fun, very intriguing. Still definitely a lot of questions with that episode, but maybe I'm supposed to have questions, which is totally fine. So I really enjoyed that episode and I was very intrigued by it. The same with Dot and Bubble. I thought that that was oh, such a great episode. It was so fun, so quirky, sci-fi. That was like, when I saw that episode, I was like, this is Doctor Who right here, this little part. I mean, it wasn't much, but like it felt, it felt like a Doctor Who episode to me. And then I thought The Legend of Ruby Sunday was a very good episode. It had a lot of great buildup and setup and the reveal of Sutek was awesome. So I thought that those, those were probably gonna be my top three episodes for this season. So with this long review and summary, overall, I felt that the season was okay. There were definitely things that I really did enjoy with the season. It is new, it's a refresh. I appreciate that, but I think there were a lot of misses here. And I just really wanna see more classic and more classic doctor, more science, more quirkiness, um, more things fleshed out a bit. And so I don't know, I, I think that they've probably already started filming their second season, but 
Viewership has been down with this season, and I hope that Russell takes note of that. And rather than being defensive about it, that he realizes, okay, what is it that people aren't connecting with anymore? There is something missing, Russell, because for me to watch, for example, the when I watched the regeneration episodes, last night I watched Matt Smith when he regenerated, and he first met Amelia Pond. Granted, I'm a little bit biased because I've already seen it. I know how her storyline plays out, so I'm already invested. But I was so intrigued by that episode right away, and I felt so excited watching it. And I actually got teary-eyed watching it because it was like I was coming home when I watched it, you know? And that was the same when I watched the other ones. It was like, oh yeah, like this is my doctor. Like this is Doctor Who to me. Like that whole episode with them running around and him running into the house and getting the guy with the laptop where, you know, he's watching porn on his laptop and just all of these things, all these crazy things. And like his showdown with the aliens at the end and basically calling them out for their shit. I loved that and I missed that. And so I want that so much for this new season. So Yes, the season, there was a lot of misses for me. There were things I really appreciated with it. I don't find it to be a complete failure. I think that there's a lot that they can do with this and make it better, and that's what I'm hoping. So we shall see. So I wanna hear from you guys, absolutely. Let's talk about it, let's discuss. We got a lot of time to discuss, right? We've got some months before the Christmas episode, so let's get the discussion rolling in the comments and let me know what you think were there a lot of misses for you? What were those? Do you, or did, did, you, did you just absolutely love this season? And please tell me and let's talk about it and, you know, shed some light in some of the things that I talked about. And, you know, maybe it will help me change my opinion. I don't know. And if you liked this video, would you please give it a like for me? And if you really enjoyed it, definitely subscribe to this channel. We're gonna be doing a lot more content. I will be doing some Doctor Who stuff. We're gonna be talking about some other things in the future, but I'm gonna be talking about a lot of other TV shows coming up in the sci-fi and horror realm. So if that's your vibe, definitely subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any more of my upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, letting me talk and just have this open discussion with you all. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a super cosmic weekend.